Say again? Can we go over buffers also? Yes, we're getting there. I was going to, because, because what's the definition of a buffer? Do you guys remember that? Oh, what, was that like a weak asset in its conjugate phase? Yes, good. So that's why we had to cover this. Buffer. So, ah, uh, the button is going to be the end of me. Okay. A buffer is a weak acid plus conjugate base. Oops. Or Weak base plus conjugate acid. And the thing is you have to remember, you have to have it be, in fact, I'm gonna start using other colors now. I haven't been, but it has to be weak and it has to have its conjugate. They have to be in there, okay? That is supremely important and that's the big fake out, okay? Because Something that, you know, they might, um, questions that will throw you off will be like, oh, it's H2, or no, let's go with, um, so HC2H3O2, you're great, great, weak acid, excellent, all right, and we're going to mix that with NaOH, okay, well, that's not possible, right, because that's a strong base. So that, that can't work with that, okay? If I said HC2H3O2 plus C2H3O2 minus. Now, that is its conjugate base with the weak acid, but it never adds them like this. What will it do, do you guys have to remember, what will it do to this to be considered its conjugate? Would it be like Na? Yes. Yes, that's it right there. They're going to put that Na out front. They're going to put the Na out front because that makes it. So this is a buffer. Okay. And what is the pH of this buffer? And, and I, you don't have to give me an exact number. Just give me a general region. What is it going to be? Seven. Well, kind of, but is it going to be above 7 or below 7? Below. below. Good. pH is going to be less than 7. So it's not going to be exactly at 7. All right? Is that because it comes from, originally comes from an acid? So yes, exactly. So even though this is a base, even though it's a conjugate base, and conjugate bases to weak acids are kind of strong, but they're not stronger than the original acid. Okay. So the pH is going to be less than 7. So, and that's where you come in with the, oops, I didn't mean to do that. So if you have the NH3 plus NH4Cl, okay, here we have, let me do this, okay, this is a base. This is its conjugate acid, okay, and together then, their pH is what? Above seven. Great. Above seven. Okay. But it's still closer to seven, right? Like it's not going to be like 11. Or right, right, right. It's going to be, well, yeah. I mean, I, it depends. It really depends on the molarity of these acid bases. Like you can make an ammonia. Ammonia could be by itself, you could get ammonia, if you've got it concentrated enough, could be like 12 or 13. Most of the time, you're going to have it around 9. Okay? And for the acetic acid, you can get that. You can have glacial acetic acid. Um, I don't know if I told the story in class. When I was in college, I was thinking about medical school. And so I had the opportunity to uh, observe a lot, shadow a lot of different doctors in different areas. And so I went to Danville, and I shadowed 
in a doctor for a day because he used to do what's called Mohs surgery. It's like laser and he could remove tumors from, from patients and things like that in his office. It was pretty awesome. Wow. Yeah. But he also did a lot of aesthetic stuff and he gave facelifts. Of course, we are talking about Danville in the East Bay. So it's somewhat similar to Granite Bay. And so I got to watch him do a, basically he did this peel. He did a peel in the office. He took glacial acetic acid and put it on this woman's face for like 10 or 15 minutes. Yes. If you left it on longer, you could really burn off a lot of skin. But we're talking about pH of 13. I mean, this stuff is, it's strong. So he took glacial acetic acid and it was bizarre. It was just such a, an awakening. Actually, here's the funny thing is she was the mom of the Cal Poly quarterback. Cal Poly's football team, she was the mom of the quarterback. It was, it was like this weird, like convoluted way of kind of knowing someone. Anyways, to make a long story short, <laughs> you could you could get it pretty concentrated. Yeah, it hurts so bad. Yes, her face was red, and it definitely was very sensitive. And of course, she had to keep out of the sun for a while, and yeah. but helps you make helps make you look younger. Get rid of all the dead skin on on the top. It's not worth it. It's really not worth it. Well, you know, I think at some point, if you're wealthy enough and it's important enough, then some people make those decisions. Well, I will age gracefully. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, anyways, back to the point. So when for most of the AP stuff, it's going to be in that region. Okay. Um, now, let's go to the tests that we had and take a look at some of those questions that a lot of students missed. So let's start with our first test, and then we'll do the retake. Okay. So if we look up here on the acid-base test, um... Number one says the most nearly neutral solution. So right there, there is no mention of buffers. So you do not need to use that definition of a buffer. Now you're just looking at the two substances and what, what kind of a substance will they make? Well, NH3 is a base. NH4Cl is its conjugate acid, but we already know that, that those together are going to be less than seven. So... It could be the closest to neutral, but it's not very neutral. HCl is a strong acid. Well, unless there's a strong base on the other side, it's going to be it's going to be much lower than seven. Or A was going to be above seven. Sorry, I think I said that wrong. A is above seven. B is way below seven. C we have strong base with a weak base. Well, there's hands down that one's definitely going to be higher than seven and definitely not close to seven. And then D says ammonia, which is a weak base, and acetic acid, which is a weak acid. Well, it's good. we don't have to know exactly, but and it depends on the molarity, but more than likely, those two together, you're going to get a pretty neutral solution. So that's why D is the answer. And having just gone through all the other ones up there, a buffer at a pH of less than 6. So you have to find, if it's a buffer at a pH of less than 6, you know that you're looking for an acid and its conjugate base. So we just look through the three of them. Which one is an acid and its conjugate base? Oh, and this was the typo. Ah, oh. you are right. And so then, what what should have been? Actually, this is what should have happened. Let's see. This one's actually E, and A should have been this right here. And make that. It sure doesn't help it when I'm using old versions of stupid tests. NA. Okay. And then your answer is A. Isn't that handy? So we look at that. There's the there's the acetic acid and its conjugate base, sodium acetate. I think we ended up switching this to a different. I think we ended up making it greater than seven and making it be the NH3 and NH4Cl, but that's okay. Okay, and then um, down here, we'll just look at a couple of these. Amphiprotic, it can give up an H, it can lose an H. Or I'm sorry, it can give up an H or it can gain an H. And so that's D, because that Na can be replaced with an H and this H can go away. Produces a non-conducting solution. B, oh, here we go, because this doesn't come apart. It's not ionic. 
It's not ionic at all, so that's B. And undergoes hydrolysis in water solution to produce a basic solution. So D, if you combined it with water, like plus water, then it would gain an H, become H2CO3, which is that carbonic acid, that weak acid, and leaves you with OH minus. So hydrolysis just means it gains an H plus. It, you know how you can do that, basically. No, no. If, if, if it's hydrolysis, it just means it comes apart. Here, let's... um. Let me do hydrolysis for both directions. So, if we're talking about hydrolysis, and this, this definitely comes up in acid-based stuff. Okay, so we can have, and, and we're gonna use, we're gonna use sodium bicarbonate for both of these. So, it can combine with water, and, this H can be donated over here, and you get... Oh, you can't. Oh, I'm still on the other... So sorry. Okay. So this H... I'm sorry. This H comes over here, so then you get H2CO3+, plus, and you get um, the uh, OH-, minus because it gave it up now. You can go the other way as well, and this time the H gets donated over here, and it just depends on the conditions and what you're asking for, but this is the whole amphiprotic thing. You get Na2CO3 plus H3O plus. So hydrolysis is just the breaking up of water. You have an H plus, plus an OH minus. So the H can go one way or the other way, or if you get it, if you add, you can add water to it. Hydrolysis is, you know, you, you're, you're creating different situations, but that's basically what's happening with hydrolysis. Okay. okay, let's go back. And this time, let's look at the retake test. Okay. So on the re, is you guys see the retake test okay? Is it not big enough, or is it? No, we're good. It's just the first one's black, but it's... Oh, take, okay. So, number one, which solution will produce a buffer with a pH less than 6.5? So we're looking for a weak acid and its conjugate base. And we look up here, and we see just what we used in our example. We have the acetic acid plus the sodium acetate. Okay? A buffer with pH greater than 7.5. So we're looking for a weak base plus its conjugate. And this is kind of, it's written backwards, but you can see there's the conjugate base, or I'm sorry, there's the conjugate acid, and there's the weak base. Okay, now three and four, there's no mention of buffers. So right now you know it doesn't matter. It's not the weak plus it's conjugate. A pH of about seven, you're looking for a neutral solution, and you have a strong acid and a strong base, perfect and then the most acidic, which means that you probably want to find a weak acid and a strong acid. And here we have a strong acid and a KBR, which is actually, it doesn't contribute to pH at all because there's no conjugate there. It's just the salt, it's just the extras, it's the spectator ions for other stuff. So that is why B is the answer there. Okay. Okay, this is taking a little while, but that's okay. What we're gonna do now is now I wanna try that function with showing the YouTube. I'm gonna try to show YouTube as, a, as an app in here. Um, if it does not work, then I'm just gonna show you a brief part of a video. Here, wait, Mr. Warner? Yes. Before we do that, could we go over seven on the retake? Sure. Is it still up to show you guys? Is it, can you guys still see the test right now? Yeah. Okay. Which of the following solutions has the lowest pH? So you want, you're looking for either a straight up strong acid or you're looking for a conjugate acid. And so if we look at these, the answer happens to be A, but NH4, that's a conjugate acid to a weak base. Okay, 
ALOH3, that's a weak base because it's not one of those six Tetris ones. NaOH is a strong base. And KBR is just that salt. It doesn't have a conjugate in it. So it's pretty much a neutral pH. So A is our only choice on that one. Okay, I just wasn't, when we did that question on the retake, I wasn't sure because none of them seemed like obvious acids or bases. I gotcha. So I didn't know how to do that. Yeah, so they're trying to be tricky by making you figure out which one's a conjugate acid. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, oh, what did I do with it? Oh, there it is. All right, let's, let's see if this works. also important a strong or a weak acid or a base. Well, the equilibrium constant is going to help there as well. So if we look at acetic acid, in this case, it's donating a proton to water. And so we can figure out its acid ionization constant, which is essentially an equilibrium. It's hard to measure Ka or deal with those numbers. And so you'll see pKa, which is simply there's a cool YouTube video of Jabroni, and we can write it like this. And if we were to look at all of the um, strong bases that we have, you can see that they're all going to be hydroxides formed by combining um, with atoms from the Actually, an equilibrium constant. So if we were to write it out, it's going to be the concentration. Yes. Okay, hit the YouTube app on the side. Okay, let me, wait. Do you have the app on the side? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think I'm good. Yes, yay. You got it? Okay. Sneha, you got it paused? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and play it. ...of the two products divided by the concentration of only one of the reactions. Again, we're simply ignoring water. If we were to measure that, we find it's a Let relatively small uh, number. What does that mean? Since the equilibrium constant is so small, it's actually favoring to have a hydrochloric atom on that side. And there's a cool use. And so their equation for a base, it would look like that those. And if okay, it's I ever greater than one, then it's favoring like, products. And these are going to be... Okay, I paused it. I wanted to start at about 6 minutes, 30 seconds or so. And so I'm trying to get it to that point because this stuff, like this, you could watch this whole video later on the Bozeman Science. I wanted it to queue up to a specific point that's going to talk about titration and titration curves. Okay. Uh, before that, I can't, like, I'm just seeing an empty, uh, like, I'm like on YouTube, but the, the video itself is totally black. Really? Here, can yeah. you screen share that? Maybe I can know. How do I screen share it? Well, I can. I might be able to screen share this. Let's see if it works for me. Because the YouTube is working for me. It's, it, it's literally, it's like... Okay. I mean, can, everything's up, it's just not... Can you guys see... Can you guys see what I have here? Yeah. Okay, so this little window is what I've got in mind. This is the video, the YouTube video I've selected. And then wow. he's... This is Bozeman Science, he's talking about equilibrium now. And then he's going to talk about titration. 
so and so if you clicked on YouTube, Lexi, you're saying that your yours didn't pop up showing that? No, one second. Oh. oh okay. We lost Lexi. We'll wait till she comes back before we do anything else. I wonder if oh good, Lexi's back. Welcome back, Lexi. Wait, you're muted. Okay. I tried to refresh my page and it still worked. I didn't. Okay. So, can you select the YouTube app on the side and see if it brings it up? Okay, now I see your screen. So. You see my screen. Okay, so I'm going to try to. Okay, so I'm just going to try to see. I'm going to. I'm going to. Do this one again. Well, let me just hit play and see if it shows up for everybody. Uh, strong bases that we have. You can see that they're all going to be hydroxides formed by combining. Um, so, Lexi, did you see that? No, I can't. You still don't see it? Do you girls see it? So, Sneha, do you see it when I do that? Caitlin, did you install that app separately? You guys see it. Okay. All right. Yay. Yeah, okay. Here we go again. With atoms from group one, two, and three. And so, what's a neutralization reaction? That's when we're getting a reaction between an acid and a base. And there are really three groups that we can have. We can have a strong acid and a strong base. And what happens there, they all are formed. We could have a weak acid and a strong base. What's going on there? Well, basically, we're going to take that conjugate, that conjugate acid, and it's going to form a conjugate base. But remember, it doesn't form all of that right away. And then likewise with a strong acid and a weak base, we're going to have that weak base forming the conjugate acid, and so it's not going to all transfer to this right away. And so we can use acid-base titrations to look at that. So what would it look like if we're doing a strong acid and a strong base? Well, let's set this up with a burette. What we're going to do is be adding sodium hydroxide to hydrochloric acid. You can see down here in the Erlenmeyer flask that we have a pH that must be less than 7. We're using phenylphthalein as an indicator. And so if we add some of that sodium hydroxide, eventually it turns pink. So that tells us that at some point it went towards a greater than 7 value. If we were to actually graph the pH over time, it would look something like this when we have a strong base to a strong acid. And so what's going on here? Well, at this point, we're adding a lot of this base. It's converting that acid into water, but the pH isn't changing very much because we have lots of this strong acid still in the container there at the bottom. Eventually, what happens is we reach equilibrium or the equivalence point, and then all that base that we're adding is simply going to pump it up towards a more positive pH value. It's going to become a base. And so we have the smooth curve. We simply split the difference, and we're adding a strong base to a strong acid at equivalence point. Now, what happens if we add a strong base to a weak acid? And so in this case, we're going to have acetic acid in the bottom, and then we're going to add a strong base, so that's sodium hydroxide. And you might think, since we're adding this strong base, it's simply going to turn quickly like that. We're going to add the base. It's quickly going to get rid of all of that conjugate acid. But if we were to do the titration, we'd get a curve, and it looks more like this. And so what's going on is it starts to increase like that, but eventually what we're doing we're creating a bunch of this conjugate base, this acetate ion over here. And so this whole period of time right in here, what we've essentially created is a buffer solution. And we'll talk more about that in the next video. But what it's going to do is it's going to stabilize the pH. It's not going to change very much. And then eventually what happens is it's going to go towards the base. We're going to reach an equivalence point. But look at the equivalence point right here. Um, that equivalence point is going to be much greater than the 7. Now, what's causing that buffer solution, remember, is Le Chatelier's principle. What we're doing is we're adding more of the base, which is forcing more of that acid to be converted into a conjugate base, which is stabilizing that pH. Likewise, if we were to look at a strong acid and a weak base, so we're starting at a really high pH right here. As we add the acid, it starts to drop down really quickly, but now we've created a buffer solution right here, and the equivalence point is going to be lower than 7. 
this case. And you should understand what those titration curves look like in each of those three different situations. And so did you learn the difference between a strong and weak acid and base? Remember that's based on the equilibrium constant. Did you learn how strong and weak acid... Okay. So, um, did the video come through pretty clear as far as sound and what you guys could see once we had it figured out? Yeah. Okay. I want to see something else. What would happen... I'm going to do a screen share of my desktop. And I want to see if I made my desktop really big like this. Oh, that's probably too big. Probably getting cut off. Let's make it smaller again. Well, how does this look to you guys? When I do it like this, can you guys see it okay? Or is that really small? Okay, I'm going to make it really big. How about now? Basically, we're going to take that conjugate, that conjugate acid. See, and but the sound is so base, but remember, it doesn't less. Form all of that anyway. Okay. And then, likewise, with a strong acid and a weak base, we're going to have that weak base forming That's a better. conjugate acid. Yeah. And so it's not okay. going to all transfer those protons. And so we can use acid base titrations to look at that. Okay. So what would it look yeah, like? So, I think we're not going to follow the way that I'm good. Okay. So let, let me ask you guys a question because this is part of what's helping me out, of course, is that if. Uh, let me, I'm going to take it off here. So if, which one do you, do you like better? Do you like it when the YouTube app is in there and you guys watch it that way? Or if I made it full screen, um, do you guys like that better? YouTube app. Yeah, me too. Oh, really? Okay. Well, yeah. that's, that's good. That's good to know. See, this is the information that I'm going to talk to the teachers about. This is why we're doing this. Well, the main reason we do this is a review for you guys, but what you guys are helping me with is is uh, that kind of information. You're helping us, we're helping you. Yeah. Oh, good. Symbiotic relationship. Related. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So part of the reason we were doing this app, or not the app, part of the reason we're watching the YouTube video is that, and I'm going to talk about this briefly because once we get over an hour, it takes a long time for me to try to download this and, and load them up. So I like to keep these these uh, hangouts a little bit shorter. But I want to talk about the, um, the titration curves because we didn't spend a lot of time on that. But I want you guys to, because I think that they might ask you questions to identify it. So I'm going to draw a big graph here. And this is, let's say that um, this is 0, this is 7, and this is 14. Okay. So if we have an entirely neutral, like a strong acid getting um, with a strong base, okay? It's gonna look like this. It's gonna come out here, it's gonna go up in the center, and then it's gonna come out here, okay? So that's a strong acid, strong base, okay? And you're, and you're seven, this is the equivalence point, okay? If you have a weak acid titrated with a strong base, so weak acid with a strong base. So now, if it's a weak acid, the pH is going to start off a little bit higher. Oops. And when it comes out, it's going to have a longer sort of buffer region, and then it's going to come up here and maybe we'll, do, we'll just do it like this, okay? This was a weak acid with a strong base, and now the equivalence point is higher up here. If we have a, um, if we have a strong acid with a weak base, we're gonna start off lower down here, and, um, so we're going to go something like this, and then we would come up. And really, with this one, um, we're just, I'm just going to make it in the middle just because. Okay. So this was a strong acid with a weak base. Okay. And then finally, you have weak acid with weak base. I'll make this one green. 
And this one's just pathetic. It's like, and it's like, whoop. And, whoop. Okay, so, oh, weak acid, weak base, okay? Um, so when you look at these, it, it can give you some idea of, of what you're dealing with. Um, you might have to draw a picture on a test. There's no might. On, and on at least my final exam and probably on the test, you're going to have to draw a picture, or identify a picture. And that if you start off with, uh, this, this is a titration where you start off with an acid. We would reverse all of these if we started with a base. If we started with a base, you'd have that, that you'd be starting up there. Let me change my color to something I haven't used yet, orange, okay. So if you start up here, this is would, would be, um, you would start with a base titrated with acid. And it's all a matter of what do you have in your graduated flask or your Erlenmeyer flask, okay? And so remember that it's just in his, in his picture, you have a burette and you have an Erlenmeyer flask down here. My, my drawing is awful. Okay. And so um, whatever is in the flask, so for most of these, the acid is down here and the base is up here. So that's why the pH indicates what's in here. So... In all of these, the acid was in the bottom of the Erlenmeyer flask, and it went up. So, if you have a, um, you have a region where um, this is the buffer region. You have an equivalence point, and uh, depending upon, I didn't, oh, I didn't write these other equivalence points in. Oh, I meant to make that. Okay, um, so, and at the equivalence point is when you have equal amounts of acid and base, right? Okay, so the question is, when you have equal amounts, let's say of this strong acid and weak base, when you have equal amounts of acid and base, why is the pH less than 7? Any guesses? There's that zone with the strong acid and the weak base. Well, let me let me draw this out. Let's say we have um, this is a strong acid and a weak base. We have HCl plus NH3. Okay, gives you Cl minus plus NH4 plus. Okay. And really, all of this is happening in water. So at some point, all of the, 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 the HCl, at this point, all the HCl has been used up. So all the HCl is gone. Or, or not, or I'm, let, me, let me rephrase that. That's not a good way to write that. Let me do it like this. Oops. Because the, in this case, oh no, it was strong acid with weak base. Okay, so down in here, this is where the acid was. So all of the all of the acid is used up by all the, the base that has been added. Okay, and so if there's a strong acid with a base, it's going to add all the H's to it. So you're going to be left with an NH4 plus. So NH4 plus is going to be floating around. And that is a conjugate acid, but it's weak. And so you should know that all of those things are really, when they're in water, are in an equilibrium situation. Am I doing this right? Oh no, I'm doing this right, I'm doing this right. Okay, sorry. So what's happening is that when you're in this equilibrium, when you're in this equilibrium, and this is considered a conjugate acid, right? 
it's going to donate an H to the H2O, making it H3O plus plus NH3. So what is it increasing the concentration of? It's H plus. H plus, exactly. So even though all of the bases have been used up, all the acids have been used up, there's no more acid necessarily in there to contribute to this. The NH4 is in equilibrium producing H pluses, which brings that pH down which is why the pH is less than seven when you do a strong acid weak base. Now talking about this, this would be a free response question. They would give you the situation and say, you have a strong acid and a weak base. You need to draw the curve. You need to draw a particulate diagram and you need to explain what is happening. Okay. So, you would need to talk about these two equations that are happening. You would need to be able to draw this curve, okay? And before we totally get into the particulate drawings, at this point, midway, this is called the, well, it's not called anything, but it's, it's the midpoint is where the, the, um, the amount of, let's say the, the amount of NH3, the concentration of NH3 is equal to the concentration of the NH4 plus. And that's when we're specifically talking about weak acids and bases. We don't, we don't usually refer to it in uh, strong acids and strong bases. We usually talk about it um, when we're talking about weak acids and weak bases, okay? And what ends up happening is, you remember this equation? pH equals pKa uh, plus log of the concentration of the, oops. Uh, sorry, we're doing pH. This one is supposed to be base. Base over the acid. Okay, and if these, this is the, this is the base, this is the acid, when they're equal to each other, what's log of one? Do you guys know what the log of one is? Zero. zero. There you go. So this is really zero. So that's where the pH is equal to the pKa. And this ties in again to buffers, because you have a buffer region. In the middle of the buffer region, the pH is equal to the pKa, because the concentrations of the base, the weak base and its conjugate acid are equal, or the concentrations of the weak acid and its conjugate base are equal. So then they could easily, being the clever people that they are, say, draw a particulate diagram of this right here. So if we were gonna do that, I'm gonna to go to the next page, and this is the last thing we're doing tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so and you'll have to do some sort of a legend, I'm sure. And if you remember that, that strong acids dissociate completely. So when I draw these pictures, I'm gonna draw them in the dissociative form. I'm just gonna draw the ones that are the most important. It might have you draw them all, but Let's say triangles are equal to H pluses. So there's H pluses floating around. Okay. And there's one, two, three, four, five of those. Okay. And I could say that, and just because I have colored pencils right now, squares are equal to NH3. So, and if you remember that at this point right here, so we're drawing, we're drawing this point right here. We're drawing that point right there. Um, we're combining, we had acids in the, in the Erlenmeyer flask and we're dropping in bases. If, if we got to the, 
if we got to the equivalence point, then I would need to have the same number of NH3s as H pluses, right? But we're not at that point. We're right here. Okay? So then, mm. right? So we're not, so that means that we still have more acid than base in there. We don't have, do you have the same number of NH4s and NH3s? Correct. So if I have these three squares though, then what I would need to draw, and I'm gonna to go to a different color again, is I would need to have three of them together. And my legend because my NH4 pluses have to be equal to my NH3s. And then if you wanted to be complete, and I don't know how much they would, that's the part that they're most interested in, but let's say that a circle is a CL minus. Well, if you have one, two, three, four, five of the H pluses, then you should have five of the circles. So does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You know, I really am beginning to like this question. <laughs> this would be a really good question for me to put on your final exam. Yay. Yeah, I'll have to see if I can swing that. But because there's, um, oh, it doesn't matter. I'm, I, you only, you have to have seven questions, and I only have five so far because I have to take one out. There used to be six, and one of them was all net ionic equations. I take the one out entirely, and I've got to put two more questions in, and I'm kind of struggling for what to make it so. And so I want to, I need to put one in about, about some of the lab stuff too. So we'll see, we'll see what I come up with, but drawing pictures would probably be good for you guys. <laughs> all right. So that is pretty much all about the acids and bases as far as I can take for tonight. Um, I feel like it's, it's most of the stuff, the important stuff that I feel like. Mm -hmm. um, before we go though, is there any questions you guys have? Are we going to be doing this again before break is over? I, on my calendar, I put down tomorrow night as well. Um, because then I probably, cause then we're running into Easter weekend. So I, like Friday night, I just felt bad if I was going to try to take up your guys' Friday night. Let me see if I, if yeah, I, I can't do tomorrow night or Friday. Yes, and that's partly why, part of why the reason I did today, oh, I didn't bring my thing in here. I negotiated all these times with my wife and then, um, well, I was just thinking about doing tomorrow night and then um, I don't know if I could swing another one over the break. So, our, can, so. I will be here any night you do you'll it. You'll be any night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Caitlin, Sol you. Yeah. So Caitlin Solomon, if I did one tomorrow night, would you be able to be there? Yeah, I'll be here. Okay, so I'll do another one. And of course, you all three of you get some extra credit for coming tonight, which is very cool. I appreciate that. Um, that was pretty. Yeah. And then, uh, so, t so we'll do one tomorrow night. Um, what should I do? Oh, anything from first semester. I didn't go back to yeah. first semester. Oh, that's um, fine. Okay. Caitlin, do you have any specific requests for review? I was just going to kind of focus on stuff from first semester, but anything you would like to see? Um, can I do like the first unit, first few units? Not um, stoic because we've been doing that a lot in other units. Yeah. So uh, if I remember right, so there's the structure of the atom, the periodic table, so the um, trends. Trends. Yeah, I was looking at some of the first unit stuff, and I noticed that there are some equations on the equation sheet that were on the 2013 exam. They're not on the equation sheet for the 2014 exam. Okay. So, I don't know, do we still need to know those equations, or...? That's the thing, is we're trying to figure out, I don't think so, and if they do, they're going to provide you the equation, but it would be really lame, in my opinion, to make you use an equation for the first time on an exam if you haven't been using it for the year. So, I don't know. Which, are there specific equations you're thinking of? Um, it was like the Rydberg equation or something oh, like that. Oh, the Rydberg equation. They are not going to do that one. Okay. They didn't even use it very much to begin with. Yeah, it was starred in my notes, but it wasn't on the equation sheet, right. so I didn't know. Right. Well, how about this? How about, um, 
And Caitlin, I will do some electric chem. Um, if I go back and do, I can, I, I'll double check my, my, oh wait, I still have that open. Let me double check to see what, I was going to take, double check to see what my first units were that, there's usually one that students get stuck on. So the, so there was the atom, periodicity, stoic solutions, and gases. Oh, what if I did some gases and then electrochem? Good. Okay. So we'll do we'll do gases and electrochem, and um, and then I'm trying to think. Yeah, we'll just do those two tomorrow night, and I might try to introduce something else that I need to work on for my Monday presentation. Okay. We don't have to know quantum numbers, right? That was eliminated. Do not have to know quantum numbers. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what else? Can we go over, like, the electrons and when they get excited and stuff and they jump? Um, we can talk about that. Let me write that down. So... That kind of goes with the Rydberg equation. It does. I'll have to double check to see how that one's. I don't know if it's really test, but but we'll talk. Electrons, um, mass spec and stuff like that. Okay, I'm saving that for another one. When I do, I'm going to do mass spec, NMR, PES, all those okay. acronyms. Um, so that's going to be that's going to be. I'm going to save that for a separate time. Now I might talk about some of it in class, but I'll try to do it on a on a Google Hangout because I can okay. bring up cool pictures. Okay, so those three things tomorrow night. Okay. Thank you. Eight o'clock. No problem. Thank you guys. Well, get some rest tonight. All right. See you guys. Bye. Bye.